stolen. Corporations are all of a sudden people. We the people. Welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. My name is David Delk. I host this series of half-hour weekly public access programs produced here at the studios of Portland Community Media in Portland, Oregon. Today our guest is Scott Moore. Scott is the Communications Director of Our Oregon. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. You bet. So uh, tell us, uh, tell us about our organ. What is our organ? Uh, our organ is uh, our organ is a, a nonprofit organization. We've been around since uh, 2005, and we exist really to be the progressive coalition for the state of Oregon. And you know, it, it, in most states, it's an unfortunate fact that a lot of organizations don't work well together. So you don't necessarily have situations where, um, well, in, in Oregon, we frequently have coalitions where we bring together groups like, for instance, AARP, Teachers Union, Environmentalists, um, the pro-choice um, uh, community, and we bring them together to find, uh, to find common priorities and, and common uh, missions. And a lot of times that we, we bring them together around ballot measures. Mm -hmm. uh, so we fight uh, ballot measure campaigns, both fighting the bad ones uh, and uh, and advocating for, for the good ones. And so we, we build these great big coalitions and we get a lot of good done. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. And, and uh, I, I, I know that sometimes the um, ballot measures that get labeled as bad by our organ or are not universally uh, declared bad by the progressive community. And I'm thinking of 4647, uh, which were the campaign finance reform, which you sure. folks opposed. And mm -hmm. I actually have to that, be one of the right. chief petitioners right. on 46. Right. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, it was an instance in which we, which we disagreed. Yeah. Right, yes. I think, I think more, more often than not, though, what, what, we, uh, what we see are ballot measures by people like Bill Sizemore or Kevin mm -hmm. Mannix. Uh, you know, in 2008, we, we uh, brought together and led the coalition to defeat all of uh, Sizemore and Mannix's uh, ballot measures. We ran the table on that and saved the state billions of dollars in what would have been massive tax cuts for, uh, right. for the wealthiest. Right, right. Uh, and then uh, we, we were also um, uh, proud to have brought the coalition together around uh, what became measures uh, 66 and 67 in 2010, which uh, increased the tax rates on large corporations and uh, and the rich in order to, to raise hundreds of millions of dollars for our schools right. and critical right. services. So, right. And, and we did that by, by bringing together, uh, you know, again, these uh, a, a broad, uh, diverse coalition. Right, yeah, and, and the Alliance for Democracy was most definitely with you. That's right, 66, that's right. 67, yeah. we were very pleased to see that one, that one win. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and this is not our main topic, but I, I know that you're looking at some ballot measures for the coming, for November of this year, mm -hmm. and it was around taxes. Um, anything you can tell us about those? Sure, so, so last fall, we filed uh, a number of uh, of sponsorship petitions, uh, more than uh, 10, I think 10 or 12, that would raise revenue for our schools for, for critical services like services for seniors and people with disabilities, um, and and to protect funding for our basic safety net services for people who are, are still being victimized by the recession. And these initiatives would do that in uh, in sort of a variety of different ways. For instance, one would um, raise the tax rate on households that make more than a million dollars. Another would uh, would raise the the tax on corporate profits above ten million dollars. Uh, and there's also a couple of ideas about reforming the uh, the corporate kicker and getting that money back into our classrooms or back into uh, the general fund that pays for for our basic services. And we're still very early in the process. Um, there's a lengthy legal process that you have to go through in order to get a ba get ballot titles and and to to move through that. And we're still we're kind of at the tail end of that, but we haven't yet made a final decision on what we might go forward mm -hmm. with or why. But the reason why we filed these initiatives is because we're in a very real and immediate crisis of funding for our basic priorities. We have a situation where Oregon's K-12 classrooms are absolutely overcrowded. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had uh, uh, the fortune to uh, to visit a few uh, in the last year, and it's remarkable. Um, there are classes that 
used to have 20, 25 kids now have 35 or 40. Mm. And not only is that preventing these kids from getting a quality education, or, or at least the, the education that we think they deserve, that we all sort of agree they deserve, but in a lot of cases, it's also a dangerous situation because you have so many kids, so many students crammed into, you know, into one classroom that only has one exit, mm -hmm. um, and it's something that that is, uh, in addition to the the increased workload uh, on our teachers, it's something that that creates a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress for them as well, and so that's a, that's a very real crisis. We were also. In this last le legislative session, we're, it, we were able to escape additional cuts to, to services for, for seniors and people with disabilities, but those services are based off of years of deep cuts already, and so we're seeing denials of service, of basic services to people who desperately need them. And we've also seen uh, just the basic safety net services, like temporary assistance for needy families. We've seen the eligibility get cut down for, for, for those families. Employment-related daycare, which is a program that is designed to get people back to work by subsidizing childcare for low-income workers. That has been capped, so there's now thousands of families who are otherwise eligible who can't get access to that, and so they're not able to work. Mm -hmm. um, that's the reality that we're in right now. This is a, an immediate crisis, and we need to have a larger conversation about reforming the, the, the state's revenue system, but right now what we really need to do is find a way to get some mm -hmm. money into our basic services, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's the conversation that we're okay. starting. Yeah, and, and last week we had Lori King on, who was with uh, Jobs with Justice mm -hmm. Portland, and, and we were talking about how, uh, how during this recovery period that the wealthy have been getting wealthier and uh, something like 97 percent, I'm not sure that that's the exact figure, but that's close enough, I think, 97 percent of the uh, gains in income have gone to the top one percent of the population, mm -hmm. while those at the bottom have lost income. And so these tax measures would be one way of addressing that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, th these are, uh, all of the initiatives are written in such a way that it would address the uh, the fact that our, our tax system right now is not fair. Our economic system right now is simply not fair. Um, and it's not just the, the top 1% that's getting the majority of these gains. It's the top 1% of the top 1% exactly. that's getting that's getting right. most of those economic gains. And, and, and wages and income for the rest of us have stayed flat or have fallen. Exactly. And so these would these would address that. It would it would be a step towards making Oregon's tax system a bit more progressive and right. a bit more fair. Right. Yeah. Well, let's get on to the main thing. Why you're <laughs> why you're here? We, These are related. <laughs> right, they they most definitely are. What we wanted to uh, talk about was the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, and so tell us what that is. Sure. It's a it's a, a national organization that's made up of hundreds of the largest corporations in America. Uh, and some of these are, are corporations that are that are multinational as well. Uh, these are banks, uh, financial firms, energy firms, uh, uh, food uh, food providers, private uh, prison uh, corporations, private uh, for-profit charter school corporations. Uh, it, it really runs the gamut. But what they do is they come together. And they bring in state legislators from all around the country. And what, what the corporations do is they hand over bills that they would like to see become law on the state level. And they hand them directly over to state legislators. Mm -hmm. And state legislators then take them back to their states. And it's their job as members of, of this organization. And ALEC is the, is the acronym, so it's, it's, that's the, the easy way to call them. Um, the members of ALEC, the state legislators who are members of ALEC, bring these bills forward, and, and in, uh, in many cases, they get them passed. So around the country, it's, it's primarily, actually, we could say it's exclusively Republican legislators who are teaming up with these large corporations to, to get these laws passed. I think in some of the research that we've done, we found one Democratic state, legislat mm -hmm. state legislator, I can't remember what state it's in. Um, but they are, and this isn't. I'm not saying this for partisan reasons. It's just a simple. It's just it's a simple just statement of fact mm -hmm. uh, that they are uh, exclusively Republican. And so we started looking into this into this group. You know, uh, a year ago, a bit more than a year ago, we all we all watched what happened in Wisconsin. We saw 
Governor Walker and a Republican state legislature move bills that were absolutely uh, destructive to workers, to middle class families. And they took away workers' rights to, uh, uh, to, to organize um, and to, you know, to have just basic dignity. And that started spreading throughout the rest of the country. And it wasn't a coincidence. Mm -hmm. It's because there was an, this organization, ALEC, that was pushing these same bills in every legislature around the country. And so we started looking into that, started doing research to find out what they were doing in Oregon. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of other people were doing the same, were doing the same thing. There's a great website called uh, Alec Exposed. You can go to alecexposed.org and you can get a lot of really great information about who this organization is, the corporations behind them, the legislators behind them. You can also get copies of bills that, they, uh, mm. that they've been uh, pushing around the country as well. So they, do, they, they write these template kind of bills, mm -hmm. and then the, uh, the legislative folks, so it's really the corporations that are writing the bills themselves. That's exactly right. And then, uh, and then they, they host these legislators at their conventions or <laughs> conferences. Yeah, they have, they have junkets. Yes. Junkets, right, yeah. okay. Uh, and then those legislators bring those model bills back to the, to the various states. That's right. And so when they do that, then it seems like there was this uh, groundswell of support for this kind of legislation. Uh, when when in, in essence, it's just a very, uh, uh, very small number of very, very powerful corporations who are actually mm -hmm. pushing the bills. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Oregon is not, uh, we're not immune to this, um, even though uh, our state Senate is, a, there, there's a, a slim majority, Democrats hold a slim majority in the House, it's split 30-30 between Republicans and Democrats. And mm -hmm. that means that, uh, uh, on the plus side, it means that there's an, there are enough votes to block most of these really dangerous ideas. Uh, on the, the negative side, it means that legislators who are friendly with ALEC hold co-chair positions in key committees, mm -hmm. um, which means that they can advance bills. They can advance bills directly from, from ALEC mm -hmm. into the Oregon legislature. And, uh, and so we've been monitoring that to um, to see what ideas are, are coming forward, who's who, who's basically carrying their water mm -hmm. um, uh, in Oregon, and uh, in fact, the uh, in Oregon the, the state chair for Alec is a representative by the name of Gene Wisnett, and he is uh, he represents uh, Sun River, which is you know a very very wealthy community mm -hmm. just outside of Bend. Um, uh, as demographically, that's interesting because Bend as in, and Deschutes County as a whole was absolutely ravaged by by the recession, especially oh, by oh. The, the collapse of the housing market. Absolutely, mm -hmm. they have you know among the, the highest foreclosure rates, not just in the state but in the country. Mm -hmm. And you know, Sun River, this this very you know this exclusive, relatively wealthy community, has been largely shielded from that. So Gene Wisnett, he's the representative there. He. Uh, you know, in the last few years, he hasn't really made you know any any much of a name for himself other than being a you know a solid uh, party line voter on Republican issues. But he is the state chairman for Alec mm -hmm. in the state, and they think that he's done such a good job in the last couple of years that they actually named him a legislator of the year hmm. in 2011. And so it's his job to take these bills from from Alec, you know, directly from the corporations that are that are that are funding this uh, organization, and and bring them to Oregon. And so he's he's uh, attempted to do that um, a number of times. One bill that he brought would have set up a committee uh, that would be comprised completely of uh, of private corporations, and it would have been their job to decide which public services should become privatized. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like letting, it's like letting uh, you know, Pepsi have the say on, uh, on what vending machines should be put uh -huh. in public schools. Right. Um, luckily, this was a terrible idea uh, for a lot it's of reasons. It's letting the, the fox in the hen house. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The, the, right. None, of, none of the hens are safe. <laughs> that's right. right. That's right. Uh -huh. you know, it would have been great for, for the businesses and the corporations that make up ALEC. It would have mm -hmm. been terrible for you and I mm -hmm. and for, for, for taxpayers who, who would have to foot the bill. Um, 
But another example is is less directly tied to Alec, but is a good example of this cozy relationship that legislators like Jane Wisnett have with corporations and corporate lobbyists. In this last legislative session in February, uh, legislators thankfully were able to push through this uh, a, a critical uh, set of foreclosure protections. So. These are protections for, for families who are undergoing the foreclosure process. Um, and these bills really uh, require banks to come to the table and negotiate in good faith with, with the homeowners. And, and this was something at the state level? At yeah. the state level, okay. that's right. Mm -hmm. And something we desperately, desperately needed. Mm -hmm. uh, Jean Wisnett is the co-chair of the House Consumer Protection Committee. <laughs> okay. um, and this is, this is some irony there. I think. <laughs> yes. And he he spent uh, weeks blocking the bill from even coming even coming to a hearing. It, it, it sailed through the Senate side, even on a on a bipartisan um, uh, vote, because even even Republican senators could see how desperately these bills were needed. I mean, mm -hmm. They had constituents who were facing this. Um, you know, it's it's a crisis all across the state, but. Representative Wisnett, Alec, state legislator of the year, blocked the bills from even coming to the floor, or even coming to, to, to his uh, committee for a hearing. And there was a public outcry. I mean, even you know, the, the Oregonian editorial board, which is not, you know, not mm -hmm. a bastion of left thinking, mm -hmm. um, called them out in repeated editorials, called him out specifically in repeated editorials, said, you've got to bring these forward. And so what he did, you, know, you realize that he, he couldn't just keep blocking them. So what he did is he allowed lobbyists for the for the banking lobby to come in and rewrite the bills that not only would have would have done away with these with these critical protections but would have rolled back the clock on on the protections that we currently have really and would mm -hmm. have been it was really you know it was a it was a wish list of things that the banking lobby could have ever wanted mm -hmm. and this is exactly the the, the alec model uh -huh, it's right. letting letting corporate lobbyists Write the bills that impact us. Right. So, so in the one case, uh, they they bring the bills to legislature, uh, and then in the other case, in this case, he originally was blocking the the reform, the one that would be beneficial to the ninety nine percent. And then when he realized that he couldn't block it any longer, then went and rewrote it in the interest of the one percent. That's right. Right. That's okay. Right. okay. Luckily, there were enough votes that he was he, he was beaten, and uh -huh. uh, and the this right time. thing happened this mm -hmm. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, although you know with the with the, with the house split thirty thirty like that, it's um, they Republicans and 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 legislators who are affiliated with Alec have a really good shot at getting some of their bills through. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What other kind of, what, what other kind of laws have has Alec proposed? Uh, uh, Representative Kim Thatcher, uh, she represents the Kaiser area. She's a, she's an Alec uh, task force member, which means she's she's relatively high up. Uh, she has uh, brought forward uh, legislation that is that was written directly by um, by uh, oil companies that are represented by Alec. So this is thinking like Exxon Mobil and, and corporations like that uh, that would have rolled back. Uh, environmental protections uh, and uh, fuel standards and emission protections, mm -hmm. and the bill that she introduced was a carbon copy of the bills that were introduced around the country. Um, they would have had the same result, and uh, luckily that was blocked as well um, mm -hmm. because it didn't have the votes, um, which is great. Um, I, th I presume that in other states, though, these bills are, are moving ahead. That's right. I mean, we, you know, we saw in, in Wisconsin, certainly the, uh, the bills that, that stripped public employees of collective bargaining rights, mm -hmm. that certainly went forward. Um, and, and in other, uh, Ohio, uh, we saw the same thing. Those are ALEC bills that are, uh, that are pushed forward. Um, and have become successful. Mm -hmm. uh, I, they've become successful at, at um, uh, taking away the rights of, uh, of middle class families. Um, uh, another, uh, I think, telling example is uh, here in Oregon, uh, Representative Matt Wingard, who represents the, the Wilsonville area, he is, uh, he's, a, he's a number of things. He's an ALEC member. He's also a paid employee of uh, Oregon Connections Academy, which is a for-profit, uh, it's part of a, a, a national for-profit online charter school corporation. So he's a paid employee of them. They are also a member of ALEC. 
Uh, in fact, the vice president of, of Connections Academy sat on the education task force for ALEC. So he, he basically was the one who was writing the, edu the ALEC education mm -hmm. bills. Uh, so Matt Wingard has these credentials. He's also the co-chair of the House Education Committee. And so, which is, uh, I think most people would see as a bit of a conflict of interest if, you're, if yes. you're a paid employee of a for-profit charter school while also sitting on the, the, the House Education Committee. He actually was successful in this last, uh, in last year's legislative session at moving bills. They, were, uh, they weren't in a uh, carbon copy form from ALEC, but they were, but they were pretty close. That expanded um, uh, expanded uh, uh, access to these for-profit charter schools, which in effect diverts taxpayer dollars away from our local public schools and mm -hmm. sends them to these uh, for-profit charter schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was he was successful because that is now that's now a law that happened. Really? And they have an yeah. abysmal graduate; they have a thirty percent graduation rate. So mm -hmm. they have among the lowest. Yeah, so public, Portland Public Schools constantly gets criticized because they have approximately 50%. And so this online school has 20% less yeah, they have, they have graduation yes. rate. Yeah, they have right, an okay. abysmal graduation yes. rate. There's no accountability. Mm -hmm. And Matt Wingard was successful uh, at, at, at passing a law that diverts even more taxpayer mm -hmm. dollars to them. Yeah. But one of the pluses for, for what was it called? Connections Oregon? Oregon, Oregon Connections Academy. Oregon Connections yeah. Academy. Yeah. Yeah, is, of course, it's online, so there's no staff to pay, right? Or right. very little staff to pay. Yep. No unions to deal with. Mm -hmm. No living wages requirements. No health care benefits. No. Right. And that's why that's why these you know these, these corporations that run these that run these uh, these schools, they're not run by people who ha who care about education. They're mm -hmm. run by private equity firms. Mm -hmm. And what they've discovered is that they can they can squeeze taxpayer dollars out of states, and uh, and basically put out a product that is um, uh, that's highly profitable for them um, because they they've cut their expenses down mm -hmm. dramatically mm -hmm. uh, but what we're seeing is that the results are I think the the, the the proof of their failures and the results. Right. Yeah. Absolutely abysmal. I mean, yeah. So we have we have six minutes left. Great. Yeah. And so um, what would you what how well number number one why this sudden attention on this organization because they've existed for a long time. They've become more active in the last in the last few years. Certainly, with the with the the rise to prominence of Coke Industries and the Coke Brothers, uh, who are uh, active leading members in Alec, uh, they have become more aggressive in pushing their agenda to the states, and they've turned state legislatures into basically their miniature laboratories of. Of bad policy ideas, and they have so much money mm -hmm. that they can get this done in a number of places. And the only way to fight back is to investigate and to organize and to get people fighting against them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you know. That's one of the things that that's what we're doing. That's what organizations uh, you know around the country are doing. Uh, a Common Cause has done a great deal of work around this, um, and they've they've pushed to have Alec um, investigated and uh, forced to register as a lobbying entity, which they clearly are, but uh -huh. they but they are uh, they're able to skirt those laws. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important to to remember too that this isn't this isn't all just about. Alec. I think Alec is is one symptom of a of a larger problem, and that is increasing corporate control of our political system. Mm -hmm. And you know, if Alec disappeared, you know, ceased to exist tomorrow, the problem of corporate control of, of our, our government wouldn't go anywhere. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. um, and we've we've analyzed um, lobbyist expenditures in the state, and uh, in 2009 and 2010, corporations and their lobbying organizations spent. Twenty-five million dollars lobbying the Oregon legislature. You know, to compare that to uh, labor unions, you know, which the, the, one of the right's favorite talking points is that yeah. labor unions have all this power. Uh -huh. The money that corporations and, and their lobbying organizations spent in lobbying the, the Oregon legislature was ten times that of the money spent by by labor unions. They only spent a couple million dollars. Okay. Great. All right. Yeah, I, I'm very glad that you pointed that out because <laughs> yeah, that is one of the things, and, and that uh, difference is only getting, getting worse. That's right. Uh, as we go on, particularly after the Citizens United 
Supreme Court decision case, okay. which we talk about quite frequently on this show. So, uh, so, so you're right. And as our guest from last week, Lori King, said, you know, we need to create a movement which is not just dedicated to focusing on the election, but actually creating a movement of people. And I think you're part of this, of of people who are demanding a whole different framework in which decisions are made That's in right. this country. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, Hmm. Oh, I will point out, and I'm sure you'll confirm. That, uh, I just read that Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, mm -hmm. and there was a third one. And I forget uh, who the craft. third. Craft, craft, and uh, Intuit, right. uh, Intuit Systems is oh, also yes. is also. So these are. So this is uh, is proof that the the boycotts and the campaigns against Alec are working. Mm -hmm. So there's people across the country who are boycotting and campaigning against the corporations that make up this organization, and so far that's led to Pepsi, Coca-Cola, uh, Kraft, a few others. Pulling out of uh, out of the organization, mm -hmm. um, which is I mean that, that's great news for, um, for for people power. Yes, it is right. Yeah, because people power is democracy. That's right. You know, corporate corporate power is corporate power. That's all it is. That's it's right. just corporate power concentrated special interest money in in our political system. Right. Good. Thank you very much Great. for being here. Thanks for having me. Great. Good. So we've been talking with Scott Moore. Uh, Scott is communications director for Our Oregon. Our Oregon is, uh, go to their website, www.ouroregon.com. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, ALEC itself, uh, alecexposed.org is an excellent website to learn more about them. And of course, Our Oregon has information on, on their website as well. The Alliance for Democracy is an organization dedicated to ending corporate domination, establishing true democracy, and creating a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. To learn more, visit our national website at www.thealliancefordemocracy.org or our Portland website, www.afd-pdx.org. Thanks to our crew today, Roger Bates, Dave King, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas. Thank you, audience, for watching. We hope that you'll come back again and view us again next week. Bye.